Ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, if, if you thought you understood what tonight was going to be about, you have no idea. It is going to blow your mind. Good evening. I am KD Bo, and I am honored. Honored is really an understatement of how excited I feel about tonight. Uh, today is a a day that has been long overdue. History is about to be made, and I'm not overstating it, because you have two of the biggest well, the two largest independent gospel labels in the world coming together to share the highs and the lows, the successes and the struggles of a combined 75 years in the gospel music industry. Now, think about it. Of uh, When you have success, you can do any genre you choose. They chose gospel. And while there are other labels that are merging and falling off and what have you, they have found a way to make it, to thrive. And we're going to hear from them tonight. We're going to hear some stories that will probably make you laugh and then some that will really make you take you into the minds of these two powerful, dominant titan of men. The incredible of Ty Scott Records, Mr. Brian Scott. He is uh, a, 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 a brother who has, without question, uh, taken the helm uh, from his uh, father, the patriarch of Ty Scott Records. And he has taken the helm and has taken it on into the stratosphere. Tremendous success. He's a husband, a, a father, a son, a pastor, a psalmist, a teacher, entrepreneur, and probably one of Jesus' disciples. He's just that guy. Brian Scott, CEO of Ty Scott Records, joins me tonight, as well as my friend from maybe over 25 years. How about that? He is the CEO of Black Smoke Music Worldwide. You, you, don't, you know him as uh, the music guy, but what you may not know is that he is a titan of a businessman. And one of the reasons why he has made it this far is because of his business acumen. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to experience tonight is surreal and it's powerful, and I can't wait to get started. All right, so put your hands in front. So here's what we know. Tonight is a night of hope and inspiration. COVID-19, a lot of people inside can't go out, can't really do much of anything. But in the midst of all of this, we have examples of when times get tough and when everybody else folds, these two made it. They made it. And so if they can make it, two black men can make it, you can make it too. We're going to have a bastion of artists that are going to tell their stories. We're going to hear from them. We're going to have some great music. The hope, the inspiration is real. But this artist is one, play a video. This artist is one that really took the nation by storm. It was his voice, it was his writing ability, and his mindset of being able to know the plight of the culture and speak directly to it. He's Mr. I Trust You himself. Here's a video from James Fortune, or at least a snippet of I Trust You. God, you still kept me. Oh, God, you're faithful. You see what I'm going through. You know my pain. I trust you. It's not easy for me, but I trust you. I know you're here with me. I'm not by myself. As long as I got you, Jesus, I can make it. I trust you. Yeah. Come on, by your side. I trust you. Just one of the number one songs that was on Black Smoke Music, that is on Black Smoke Music Worldwide, uh, from Kerry Douglas. Matter of fact, let's bring him on now. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO, the top dog himself, and my personal friend from 25 years, of 25 years, Mr. Kerry Douglas. What up, man? Hey, everybody. How you doing? I'm just happy to be here hanging out with my buddy, uh, Katie Bo, and uh, it's going to be an exciting night. Hey, man, <laughs> it's good to see you, brother. Hey, listen, so we got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, I, I do want to just kind of give people an insight, a little bit, a little backstory on you. We got a lot of artists and you got quite a lineup tonight. Uh, but let's give a little backstory on you. Um, when you started out, you did not start out in gospel music. You started out on the secular rap hip hop side. Let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I started off, um, actually, you know, it's weird. I actually started off as a car salesman at the age of about 18 years old. And, um, and from that point, I started doing promotions for the car dealership in town. Uh, and um, when we were doing the promotions, I started uh, hooking up with a lot of the rap artists that would have come in on uh, weekends and promote uh, buying some cars. So I was a car salesman. Uh, well, I had another life before that, but 
around that time, I became a car salesman. Uh, and then um, because I had such good experience in the market and sales, and I uh, started dealing with the rap artists. And so I got into the music industry at that point, you know, mainly promoting, uh, promoting concerts and things around Houston, Texas. So what, what made you a good salesman, man? I mean, clearly, and you, I'm gonna let that slide. I'm gonna let that slide. The first, I'm gonna let the first one slide. But you, you know, we are gonna go deeper than that. Don't, don't, don't do me. Don't do me, Doc. <laughs> um, so, uh, what made you? What do you think made you a good salesman? What was it like when you was growing up? What was the the, the home life like that made you have that hustle on you like that? Well, you know, man. Actually, and I'm sure there's somebody out here that probably uh, was like me. You know, I, I didn't grow up in a rich family or anything like that. I grew up in a basically a poor, a little below uh, average family. And, uh, you know, and in the hood where I grew up at, at that time, you know, I, I got my college degree on watching people around me. And, uh, you know, my brother, um, you know, he went to prison at 16 years old. He died there in 22, uh, got killed. Um, uh, people around me, I watched a lot of people, uh, you know, just didn't do the right thing. So my education came from watching people who was doing the wrong thing. And I, I knew at that point in my life that, you know, I just wanted better. I want to do better. I want to be better. And uh, so uh, that's my humble beginning. Who did you model yourself after, though? I mean, was there a model that you said, hey, if I could be like him, I'm, I'm, I'm good? You know, it's pretty strange with me because I never modeled myself after anyone. I was always a forward thinker and I always thought for myself. So I didn't have a role model. So, you know, I had to understand my role in life through a lot of fortunes and misfortunes. You know, I, I come from from the the other side of the tracks. And so I just had to yeah. Learn by experience and um, and just kind of figure out what I needed to do and what I didn't need to do. And, and that's made clear. a whole lot of mistakes in the process. Hey, man. And that's and that's clear because when you got into the gospel music industry, um, you were different. Um, I, I remember you just you just had a way about you. You you know what you do? You reminded me of another one of my friends. Uh, who does not take no for an answer, especially if it's something for you. You never really took no for an answer. You, you, you just, you would ask the same question, but you'd ask it a different way. And if no was the answer, then you just might come out into a different room. So what I appreciated about you was you brought that hustle from the secular world over to the gospel. But what was that transition like? Well, you know, I did bring the hustle from the secular world over to the gospel. But I also at that time was dealing with a form of music that was on its way out. So uh, when I got in the gospel, I used the same tactics and techniques that I that we did on the secular side, but I was promoting more traditional music, more quartet music. Uh, and and I, it was a challenge for me. But in my life, I believe I specialize, I specialize in challenges. So instead of me just getting over here and going with the flow when I got in the gospel, mm -hmm. I got over here and, and uh, you know, I was trying to do traditional music with Keith Wonderboy Johnson, Evelyn Turrentine AG, Darrell McFadden, uh, Damon Little. And those guys were, um, they were trying to kill that form of music at the time because that was the era that, uh, you know, it was Kurt Franklin and everybody was thinking that they had to look a certain way or be a certain way, you know, to cross over uh, what they cross over, I guess. You know, they were going to be inspirational and this and that. So I got into gospel music at a time, but the type of music that I was promoting wasn't popular. So not only was it hard dealing with gospel, it was even harder dealing with the form of music that I chose to deal with at that time. But, you know, there was a lot of gatekeepers. That's and, what I uh, wanted to point, about, to point out, because people, the consumers wanted the music. And I'm glad you brought this up. The consumers wanted the music that you were putting out. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of the artists. They still want it. And they and they still want it. So and one of the artists, we, let's let's go ahead and bring him up. 